Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we're discussing student loan forgiveness for physicians and other healthcare workers on the front lines of COVID-19. I'm joined today by Dr. Julie S. Byerly, Vice Dean for Academic Affairs at UNC School of Medicine in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Dana Lichtenberg, AMA's Assistant Director, Congressional Affairs in Washington, DC. And Hari Iyer, a medical student at Northeast Ohio Medical University and the AMA's Government Relations Advocacy Fellow in Washington, DC. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer in Chicago. Uh, residents and young physicians are playing a critical role in responding to the COVID-19 crisis and providing care to patients on the front lines. Loan forgiveness is now a part of the conversation. Ms. Lichtenberg, uh, can you give us some background on that? Yes, um, as you know, the average medical student can have upwards of $200,000 worth of debt by the time they graduate. Um, this is something AMA has advocated for uh, help on for, for quite a long time. Um, and the current crisis has made the situation worse as people are graduated early and can't find jobs or can't go into residency training programs. Um, their work has been interrupted, yet they're being called to the front line. Uh, the previous COVID bill that passed in March did include some delays um, in both payment and for interest accruing through September 30th, but we don't think that's enough. So we've been advocating to Congress that loan forgiveness needs to happen for those people who've gone to the front line. So last week, uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney from New York introduced the Student Loan Forgiveness for Frontline Workers Act. Um, it would provide private and public loan forgiveness for people specifically healthcare providers on the front line who made significant contributions in the COVID fight. And that includes nurses, physicians, anybody else who's a healthcare provider, and also includes medical researchers and people who are doing lab testing. Mr. Iyer, as a medical student, can you provide uh, uh, your perspective on this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as a medical student, I have heard about my colleagues who are you know across the country being called upon? They are uh, you know graduating early in some cases. There are resident physicians who are being called upon to you know various services across the hospital, as well as physicians who are really hearing the call uh, to action for COVID. And you know the impact of uh, you know debt as a medical student is is pretty substantial. And and as as it is, medical students are a particularly vulnerable population whether it's because of, you know, the uh, work hours or, you know, the limited amount of uh, personal protective equipment as folks go into this uh, new clinical environment with a new set of responsibilities. Uh, you know, it's important that as we uh, call these folks forward to serve in this time of need, that we're able to reward this sort of heroism and sacrifice. There have been uh, some initiatives where folks have tried to uh, document the amount of healthcare workers uh, physicians, uh, nurses, medical students who have, you know, fallen sick or actually passed away. And, you know, the estimate is at least in the hundreds. So people have really put it all on the line to, to come and serve when other uh, patients need it. And it's really great to see that there is a federal response uh, to help and reward uh, some of this sacrifice. Uh, Dr. Byerly, your program at UNC already incorporates loan forgiveness. Can you tell us more about that and the thinking behind it? Sure. So uh, at the University of North Carolina, we're proudly public. Um, we like to say supported by the people for the people. And in our state, which is a largely rural state, we have tried to incentivize um, the production of a diverse workforce that will serve in rural communities. And as you know, rural communities are historically underserved with healthcare delivery. So we have a loan forgiveness program that was initiated by one of our generous philanthropy groups, the Keenan Charitable Trust, and then added to by state resources. And our graduates who promise to serve in high need disciplines in rural communities are supported by that loan forgiveness program that's a public private partnership. It's been especially successful in two areas. One is the concrete relief provided by debt reduction. But then two is the inspiration that comes to those who want to be of service to communities when they see the public and private investment in their success. 
So I think not only um, is uh, loan forgiveness really important to relieve that heavy debt burden uh, that many of our health profession uh, students graduate with, but also it provides inspiration and a source of um, support that will really decrease the burnout and the mental health burdens associated with service in this time of pandemic. Yes, Dr. Byerly, I mean, student debt has been an issue for a long time for medical students. Why do you think it's so important to be addressed nationally at this moment in time? Well, I think the needs of um, our communities have never been greater regarding their health and well-being. And that's not simply surviving the COVID illness. It's also dealing with the mental health and other health consequences that this pandemic will lead to. And so many of us, uh, our scientists, all of our health professionals need to focus on well-being. And we need to incentivize young people uh, with bright futures to pursue a service in science um, in the health professions in every way that we can. Ms. Lichtenberg, uh, who exactly would benefit from the legislation that you mentioned should it pass? And how is the AMA supporting that? Um, it, it would benefit anyone who is a healthcare provider who's on the front line doing clinical care related to COVID. And it also would benefit anyone who's doing medical research and testing that's related to COVID and is making a significant contribution to help end the epidemic. Um, what we are doing to promote this, um, we have endorsed the bill. We have sent a letter of support. Um, our name obviously holds a lot of weight um, in the public health sphere. And we are also working directly with House and Senate leadership to try to get this included in the next COVID-related package. Um, the House just introduced their next bill. It's going to be voted on on Friday. Um, it does not currently include loan forgiveness, though it does extend and enhance some of the loan deferral programs. Um, but we expect this to take probably two to three weeks, which is typical, um, to negotiate with the Senate on a final package. And we're pushing hard to make sure that this is included. You know, I appreciate that push so much, Dana, because um, I'm thinking about our learners. Um, I'm thinking about, for example, some of our residents who have been working hard in intensive care units to care for very sick patients, and they're finishing their residency during this pandemic at a time when many who would hire them are compromised by the significant financial losses that our health systems have experienced, just as other businesses have experienced during this time. And I can't imagine the feeling of a young physician who, um, in addition to being excited about launching their career, faces the stress of being able to find a job that can comp compensate them well enough to pay off a heavy debt burden. Um, you know, right when they've sacrificed their 20s and maybe some of their 30s um, toward their education and service that occurs during that education as they become physicians. So any relief that we can inspire for them right now will improve their well-being and enhance their commitment to serve. Well, thank you very much. That's it for today's COVID-19 update. The AMA has created a guide to help uh, address the issue. Uh, loan and grant information for students and residents during COVID-19 is available on the AMA site at ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. I want to thank uh, Dr. Byerly, Ms. Lichtenberg, and Mr. Iyer for being here today and sharing their perspectives. And also uh, stay tuned for AMA's tribute to medical students, the class of 2020 uh, on Wednesday, May 20th at six o'clock central time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for being with us here today. Mm -hmm.